Uh, I'm gonna defer to the, uh, the shorter brother here on this one. Always pulling the height card. Whatever's in that FedEx bag is probably for me. You think a mattress will fit in there? Just bought a mattress. True or false, there is no replacement for displacement. True, thank you. Are you here talking about turbocharging? Are you supercharging? If you ask my grandfather, he would say there is no replacement for displacement. That is true. That is absolutely false. If you ask me, 100% there is replacement for displacement. I am actually gonna be on the other side of that fence. There is no replacement for displacement. You don't need if to have a big old pretend, engine for that. If you want to play pretend, then right. yes. Get you the don't turbo need. charger and turn up the boost. Yeah, you turn up the boost and you go spool on some. Because if you have a big displacement and then you put a big old turbo on there or a big old supercharger, you're making even more power. If you're looking for power. I guess there is there's no, no replacement no for displacement. <laughs> what is Vanos and how does it work? Time to call Dr. Vanos. That's a, that's a nice BMW joke, but listen. A variation of a variable valve timing system. The European version of VTEC. You literally just have this entire unit that got bolted to the front of the engine. What it does is it uses the uh, computer actuated solenoid. Essentially, German VTEC. You know, oil chamber that basically driven, drove a helical gear into the cam to advance its, uh, its timing. To use oil pressure to advance and retard the intake and exhaust cam. From idle to 2,500 RPMs, it's off. The cams are adjusting depending on your speed and RPM. From 3,500 to like 5,000, it's on. So essentially improving that mid-range power and torque. Engage or disengage and retard or advance your timing. And then at the upper RPM range, the system is turned off and your cam timing goes back to its neutral state. It's German VTEC, bro. What is the best naturally aspirated engine? I, I have very strong opinions here. Chevy LS. S54. M30, B35. The 156. KA20. And the answer is? I think the best naturally aspirated engine is a Cosworth DFV. The BMW S65 V8. Because? Or the BMW S54. Basically. Or the BMW S85. Every cool engine ever built on the universe. Or the BMW S14. The Honda K24, the BMW S14 and S54. Or the BMW S50. Would not exist without that engine. Listen, they're great. What is the difference between an exhaust manifold and a header? Oh, I forgot, the, I forgot about the V12 using the McLaren F1. That was also a BMW engine. An exhaust manifold is going to be that collector after the exhaust gases leave the cylinder head. Headers have calculated head pipe planks to increase horsepower. One is the other one, the other one is not the other one. Right. If we're talking about purchasing something in the aftermarket, you're typically going to call it a header. A header can be an exhaust manifold or is an exhaust manifold. An exhaust manifold can't be a header. Headers are going to be individual pipes. So the difference is an exhaust manifold is any manifold. It is literally taking the exhaust gases away from your cylinder head and putting them down into your exhaust system somewhere. Usually stock cars will have a exhaust manifold. A header is doing that using calculations and tube diameters and tube lengths to optimize and scavenge the flow from the cylinder head so you get gain performance. What are ITBs? I think I had one of those in college, honestly. ITB stands for individual throttle body. The individual throttle Dad bodies. Jokes. <laughs> individual throttle bodies. It's one throttle plate and throat per cylinder. Instead of like an intake, the entire intake manifold. The science, the reason for it is... They sound fabulous. A shorter distance between where the intake valve is and the throttle plate, so therefore there's less air volume there. They look fantastic. And the closer they are, when you crack the throttle open, the more responsive the engine will be. Can I use A9 octane in my 93 octane car? Could, Could you? Sure. Sure. Should you? Do you no. love your car? If your manufacturer says don't, then don't. Thankfully, the software engineers that designed the software in your car were smart enough to realize that you probably wouldn't follow the rules. If you open up the fuel door, it oftentimes tells you what to put in your car. I wouldn't deviate from that. And they made parameters for it that said it's probably not the best for your engine. But to get the best fuel economy, to get the best power um, that has been engineered into the application, you're going to want to use uh, what they recommend. I know that a lot of cars will retard timing and make adjustments so that you can run a lower octane. Don't save the money, just put in 93. If you do that, come pick up some speed tech at the Experience Center with me and Darren. It's uh, $5.99 for a bottle. Why does your engine have a red line? What is it, what's going to be said right now? 
so JR knows when to shift. Essentially, the primary reason here is to keep the engine from imploding. I always know For when sure, to shift. For sure, it's the high BMW. What? It's still so JR knows when to shift? Okay, gr great talking to you. It's the maximum permissible revolutions per minute in an engine before you blow it up. Yeah, and the system basically it has a limit to what it can keep up with. The manufacturer designs the valve train and, and the bottom end to work within a specific range. Keeping the engine from floating the valves. I mean, if you have you ever tried to run down a hill? If the valve train is spinning faster than the spring can return it, really, really, really fast, the valve will literally hop off the camshaft. And you're running faster than you can keep your legs moving. And it will damage it. They call that floating the valves. That is the same thing. You have reached your maximum RPMs, and you will fall down and hurt yourself. Ask me how I know. What happens if I go past my red line? It'll eat itself alive. Well, luckily, your rev limit won't let you do it accelerating. It blows up, goes boom, boom, bro. That's it. The only way you can do it is if you are accidentally select the wrong gear. Have you ever heard of a money shift? If you hit your red line, you can hear it popping off the rev limiter, so you hear pop, 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 pop. It usually means just shift and go the right direction. If you go the wrong direction, then yeah, you will money shift and you'll be pissed at yourself. What is a money shift? What is a money shift? When you should have shifted into the next gear, went to shift to fifth and went to third and let the clutch out. Happens to the best of us. It's basically the same thing as you going past your red line. Yeah, it's happened to you, I believe, right? It sure has, bent all 12 exhaust valves. Yeah. The most common thing that will, will get damaged in a short-term over-rev is valves. If you're trying to go like, you know, second to third and somehow you put it back into first. The spring won't be able to return the valve fast enough. The valve will stay open. The piston will come and hit it, bend it, and you need a new, yep. new valve train. You know why they call it a money shift? It's a shift that costs you a lot of money when you do it. Because when you make that accident, it costs money. It's going to cost a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to be a bad day. Boom, boom, bye. Yeah. <laughs> breaks. What's up, YouTube? Do you have questions about your car that you're a little embarrassed to ask? Leave them in the comments below, and we'll address them in a future episode. You know YouTube doesn't watch your videos, I'm just doing what I'm told to do. I'm a Muppet here.